Questions, questions orales. L'honorable chef. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. The Bloc, they're not worth the cost. The Bloc Québécois voted in favour of increasing taxes on home heating throughout Canada, and they did so to save this Prime Minister's political career. So this is a new costly coalition made up of the Bloc and the Liberal Party, and the Minister of the Environment has confirmed that this is a coalition. He says there is a coalition in the House of Commons and that that coalition includes the Bloc. The Bloc doesn't do anything for free, though. So will the Prime Minister tell us what he offered the Bloc Québécois so that they would keep him in power and support quadrupling the carbon tax? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. I offer to Quebecers what I offer all Canadians, that is, the opportunity to grow in a greener, more prosperous future. Together, we are fighting climate change. There are three parties in this House of Commons fighting climate change. The Conservatives, though, they don't want to do anything to address climate change. The Conservatives don't understand that there can't be a plan for the economy if there isn't a plan to fight climate change. They go hand in hand. And we will work with all members in this House who want to fight against climate change to build a better world. Meanwhile, the Conservatives want to set us back to the Stone Age. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition, Mr. Speaker, he has just mixed up the Bloc Québécois and Quebecers. Those are not one and the same, because the Bloc Québécois has abandoned Quebecers. But the Prime Minister apparently thinks that the Bloc Québécois speaks for Quebecers. The Bloc Québécois wants to radically increase taxes on Quebecers, and the Bloc Québécois now wants to keep this Prime Minister in power. The Bloc Québécois supports the Prime Minister's inflationary deficits and his centralizing policies. So, the Minister for the Environment also admitted that there is a coalition in which includes the Bloc. So, once again, what did the Prime Minister offer the Bloc to get this coalition deal? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, approximately half a million Quebecers are still heating their homes with heating oil. All Quebec MPs should know, and that includes Bloc members, the Liberal Party members and other, we should all understand that those who are spending money on home heating oil are spending more money, they're polluting more, and this mostly affects lower-income Quebecers and Canadians. That's why we are offering to replace home heating oil with heat pumps. We'll work with all provinces who want to deliver this program to people free of charge, especially for those living on lower incomes, because we know that to build a better world, we need to do so together. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Prime Minister is not worth the cost or the division after eight years. Panicking under pressure from MPs in a region where he's plummeting in the polls, he'd paused the tax for some people in some places, but his minister said that other people should have voted Liberal if they wanted the same break. Now the panicking Prime Minister is further dividing the country with the confirmation from his Environment Minister that he's now in a coalition with the Bloc, the separatist party. So. We have a costly carbon tax coalition that includes the separatists. What did he promise the separatists to get them to sign on to keeping him in power for two more years? Yeah. The right honourable prime minister. Only division in this country as to whether or not we should be doing everything we can to fight climate change is within the Conservative Party. Uh, the, the Canadians are unequivocal that we need to fight climate change and we need to support Canadians through that. That's why our price on pollution returns hundreds of dollars every three months to the average family of four while fighting climate change and watching our curve bend faster uh, over the past two years than the other G7 countries. We will continue to hold Canadians together as we fight climate change while Conservatives continue to bring us backwards. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister's own Environment Commissioner confirmed he will not hit his own targets, and the Prime Minister has admitted that his carbon tax is not worth the cost for oil-heated homes. 
Now, he did that as to save his political hide, but his desperation went one step further this week when he relied on the separatists to vote with him to quadruple the tax on home heating for everyone else in Canada. So the question is very clear. What did he promise the separatists to get their support to save his political hide and quadruple his tax? The right honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, no matter how much the Conservatives try to deny it, every single day in this country we get closer to never using coal to uh, generate electricity again. And now, Mr. Speaker, we're choosing to phase out home heating oil, which is dirtier, more expensive, and disproportionately relied on by lower-income Canadians. Uh, the Conservatives uh, may try to uh, make up all the stuff they like, but the reality is replacing home Home heating oil is good for Canadians uh, when we put in heat pumps, and that's exactly what we're doing. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, he hasn't eliminated coal-fired electricity. He hasn't eliminated oil-powered uh, uh, heating in homes, and his carbon tax will not allow him to meet his own GHG targets, according to his environment commissioner. Now, that is the reality that his carbon tax is not worth the cost. And that's why people, all 10 premiers, Conservative, Liberal, and NDP, are calling for him to take the tax off so Canadians will keep the heat on. Will he be fair to all Canadians, or will he sign on with the separatists to divide our country some more? Yeah. The right honourable Prime Minister. I have to admit I'm a little worried for the Leader of the Opposition. When he has to stoop to bringing up the separatist boogeyman to try and scare Canadians, he must be running out of material. The fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, Canadians are afraid of climate change. They're afraid of the extreme weather events. They're afraid of the concerns we have about a brighter future. And what we are doing is fighting climate change every day while we build a stronger economy with greater careers, while support Canadians every single day with the high cost of living. This is what we're delivering. He has no plan to fight climate change, no plan for the future of the economy, no plan for Canadians. Colleagues. Colleagues, I'm going to ask colleagues to I'm going to ask all honourable colleagues to please uh, refrain from uh, taking or making uh, noises while uh, a member or one of our colleagues has the floor. It's important for us to hear the questions. It's important for us to hear the answers. The honourable member for Belle Chambly. Mr. Speaker, this morning, the Prime Minister repeated the government's stance regarding asking Israel to, for a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. And this stance has been called for, for many countries and organizations across the world. But Net Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening to repeated calls for a ceasefire even Anthony Blinken's calls. So Israel's attitude is truly deplorable. Would the Prime Minister agree that it's time to call for a ceasefire? Le très the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are asking for a humanitarian pause. That would be, that would help get the hostages out of Israel, uh, out of get the Gaza Strip, as well as others who are uh, citizens of other countries out of Gaza, and it would also allow for humanitarian aid to get to Gaza. We need, in order to get humanitarian help to support that, we need to support a two-state solution. We need to put an end to all this conflict because the images we're seeing on, the t on TV every night are heartbreaking for, to Canadians and to everyone in the world. We need to continue to work for the peace and security of all. The, the Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Well, I regret to observe that the State of Israel, in fact, has 
broken the trust that the international community had in them. The international community trusted them to act reasonably toward the people of Gaza. Thousands of people have died needlessly. Israel is occupying occupying Gaza, but it's gone on for a long time. So there needs to be a strong, strong action by the international community. The international community needs to take action to request a ceasefire for international peace. The Red Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, as we all know, we are working with our partners around the world in order to protect civilians. We are working to restore peace and safety for all people of the region. And we will continue to work towards that. But as parliamentarians and as Canadians, Mr. Speaker, we need to be very worried about the divisiveness and hatred and fear mongering that we're seeing in some parts of in Canada. We need to stand up to Islamophobia. We need to stand up to anti-Semitism. We need to stand up to all forms of hatred because we need to remember who we are as Canadians. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. The Liberal and Conservative corporate coalition may strike again today. We put forward a plan to help Canadians with their home heating bill, to help Canadians tackle the climate crisis and make big oil and gas pay, pay for it. Now, environmental organizations are on board, but climate delay liberals and climate deny conservatives will back the profits of big oil again. So how can the prime minister and the leader of the conservative party justify voting against this? Here, here, here. The right honorable prime minister. Mr. Speaker. Uh, it was with uh, confusion and consternation that I uh, noted uh, the way the NDP voted with the Conservatives against one of the most successful measures Canada has ever seen in the fight against climate change. Putting a price on pollution is exactly uh, how we've managed to bend the curve on our emissions faster than other G7 countries over the past two years. Uh, how we are moving forward in, with global leadership on the fight against climate change. Seeing the, the NDP vote with the Conservatives against a price on pollution is something that has disappointed millions of progressives across this country. Colleagues, I'm going to ask you please to uh, exercise great restraint. I especially ask a colleague from uh, York Simcoe to, uh, to allow other members to please, uh, have, when they have the floor, to hold the floor until it is that colleague's turn to speak. Let I have the, the Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Mr. has literally missed every single target he set on emissions. Voici notre plan. Here is our plan. We want to make heating bills less expensive for all Canadians. We want to fight climate change, and we want big oil to pay more. Many organizations that work for the environment agree with this, but the Liberal Conservative CEO Coalition will continue to protect big oil. How can the Prime Minister vote against our plan? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I know there are progressives across Canada who were deeply disappointed to see the NDP vote with the Conservatives against our most successful climate change fighting measure, the most successful one in the history of Canada, and that is carbon pricing, putting a price on pollution across Canada. We are fighting climate change. This measure fights climate change. This measure helps us invest in renewable energy, and it also helps us put more money in the pockets out of, in, of eight of ten families in provinces where carbon pricing applies. We will continue to fight climate change, and we hope the NDP will join us once again. Then I have Chef the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Most tragic and heartbreaking to see these two squabbling in this way. <laughs> <laughs> 
Prime Minister was so disappointed in the NDP leader's flip-flop on carbon tax for heat, but the good news for the Prime Minister is the NDP leader has flip-flopped on his flip-flop and now supports the Prime Minister's plan to quadruple the tax. This, with two million Canadians, a record-smashing number going to a food bank. Will the Prime Minister create another carve-out on the carbon tax for farmers so that Canadians can afford to eat. Yeah. There you the Right Honourable Prime Minister. We know, Mr. Speaker, that farmers are always focused on being good stewards of the land, and we are working with them in investing, in supporting them in many different ways to ensure that we can continue to put good quality, affordable food on people's uh, tables right across the country, and that's what we're going to continue to do, Mr. Speaker. Uh, farmers and, indeed, Canadians from coast to coast to coast know that as we fight climate change, as we put more money in people's pockets uh, every three months with hundreds of dollars with the pollution price uh, uh, return. We're going to continue to step up in building a strong economy for tomorrow, something the Conservatives simply don't understand. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is quadrupling his carbon tax on the farmers who make the food, quadrupling the tax on the truckers who ship the food, therefore quadrupling the tax on all who buy the food. Good news is there is a common sense conservative bill that's passed through the House and in the Senate where the Prime Minister's senators are holding it up. Will the Prime Minister once again cave and allow another carve out on the carbon tax for farmers? Yes or no? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Many people living in rural areas across the country, including many farmers, continue to be stuck heating their homes with home heating oil. Uh, it is dirtier, it is more expensive, uh, and uh, it is something uh, that is expensive to replace. That is why, Mr. Speaker, we are stepping up with measures that are going to deliver heat pumps to families right across the country. The 1.2 million households across this country, in every part of this country, relying on home heating oil so we can help them fight climate change and save money at the same time. That's our plan. The Conservatives have no plan. The Honourable, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Our common sense plan is found in Bill C-234, which would give another carve-out to farmers on the carbon tax. And the Prime Minister has claimed that he won't cave again. He says there will be no more carve-outs. We're asking him to keep in mind there are two million people who have to go to the food bank every month because of his policies. Will he put his ego and pride aside and ask his Liberal senators to pass Common Sense Bill C-324 to axe the tax and create a carbon tax carve-out for our farmers. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, farmers across this country know the costs of climate change. They know the costs of extreme weather events, whether it be floods or fires or more intense storms. Farmers are worried about their future, worried about their kids' future, worried about the country's future. That's why we put forward a plan uh, that is reducing our emissions and growing our economy at the same time while putting more money in Canadians' pockets. The Conservatives have no plan to fight climate change, no plan for the future of the economy, no plan for future generations. We will continue to do what's necessary to support Canadians, including farmers, long into the future. That's it. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister won't answer a simple question. It's about the Common Sense Conservative Bill to carve out farming from the carbon tax. But I understand why he feels he's in a Bind, because his environment minister said, as long as I am environment minister, there will be no more exceptions to carbon pricing. That implies that he would resign if there was another carve out. Will the Prime Minister sacrifice his crazy carbon tax minister and support our common sense bill to take the tax off?
Strike it. It's a crazy carbon tax. All right. The colleagues, colleagues, all colleagues should know that we should not, we cannot use language uh, which calls into question uh, the character of honourable members, individual members. I hear an explanation from the Leader of the Opposition, uh, and I will repeat that so that we can clarify the record. The Leader of the Opposition uh, made a correction saying that he was referring to the policy and not the person. So, but that's, that's certain. And I, th I thank the Honourable Leader of the Opposition for making that clarification, because otherwise that language would clearly be unparliamentary. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I think we'll all be waiting for a long list of corrections uh, and factual errors from the uh, Leader of the Official Opposition if uh, we go down this road. The fact of the matter, Mr. Speaker, for millions of Canadians who understand that climate change poses an existential threat to our country, to our well-being, to our economy, they need action. They expect a government with a plan. They expect a government to deliver on that plan. And that is exactly what we have been doing for eight years. Meanwhile, the only plan the Conservatives put forward are cuts. Cuts to services, cuts to program, cuts to rebates for Canadians, and yes, cuts to the most successful measure to reduce uh, climate change emissions that this country has ever seen. When is he going to come forward with a real plan? The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. It is crazy to quadruple the carbon tax on our farmers when two million people are going to a food bank every month. So now the Minister of the Environment has threatened to resign if there are new carbon tax carve-outs. We have a common-sense Conservative bill that would carve out the carbon tax for farmers. All it needs is for the Prime Minister to give his Senators permission to pass it. Will the Prime Minister please just cave at least one more time and allow a carve-out on the carbon tax for our farmers, yes or no? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, I won't use the word crazy, but I will say it is <laughs> deeply, deeply irresponsible for the Conservative Party of Canada to continue to deny uh, that taking action against climate change is important, to continue to deny that climate change is a real threat to Canadians and to our economy. Uh, the fact is, Mr. Speaker, we have put forward measures that both fight climate change and put more money back in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadian families, and we're going to continue to fight climate change because uh, the cost of inaction against climate change is far more uh, than the cost of action. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Tax isn't working. He's missed every single target. He's on track to miss his 2030 targets. And Canada is ranked 58th out of 63 Shame. on climate action. Mr. Speaker, the question is about our farmers. There's a bill, C-2-3-4, a common-sense Conservative bill to carve out farmers from the carbon tax. All it needs is for the Prime Minister to give his Senators permission to adopt this carve-out. Will the Prime Minister stand up to his Environment Minister and stand up for farmers and let Bill C-234 pass and allow this carve-out to go ahead? Here, here, here. <laughs> the Right Honourable Prime Minister. I will admit, it doesn't happen often, but every now and then, I am a little bit envious of the position that the Leader of the Opposition finds himself in, of being able to criticize, on the one hand, that we aren't doing enough to fight climate change, and then, on the other hand, say uh, that we need to stop everything we're doing to fight climate change. Uh, Fortunately, Mr. Speaker, Canadians are smarter than he takes them for. Canadians know the only way to build a strong economy for the future is to fight climate change at the same time. That is exactly what we are doing. And until he puts forward a plan that is responsible and real on fighting climate change and growing the economy, Canadians will continue to dismiss him.
The Honourable Member for Belleuil Chambly. Mr. Speaker, the next few seconds will be very difficult. I'm going to quote Adil Sharkawi. Allah deal with the people of Gaza and with Zionists. Exterminate people. Do not spare anyone. Mr. Speaker, does the Prime Minister feel that Sharkawi committed a crime under the criminal code by making that statement in public? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, those words are unacceptable and anti-Semitic. Those words spoken by a preacher are an insult to the lives and hope of millions of people across the world, including millions who lost their lives during the Holocaust because they were Jewish. We will always stand up to anti-Semitism. We will always be there to promote peace and compassion among peoples throughout the world. Then I have the, the Honourable Member for belle chambly Mr. Speaker, three hours ahead of question period, I informed the pr Prime Minister that I would ask this question. So I want a clear, specific answer. The preacher who said that, are his words criminal? And should they be treated as a crime and punished as a crime? The government appointed someone to serve as a liaison between communities. Currently, Ms. El Gawabi. Do we need her, though? The très honorable Premier Minister. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it's true that there are people saying unacceptable things around the world and here in Canada, too. What we need to do in this place and throughout the country is in to encourage people to listen, to be compassionate. We need to return to our basic values as Canadians. We need to have empathy and compassion for the suffering of our neighbours. Now, as for criminal prosecution and crimes, the police and relevant authorities will make those decisions, and I'm counting on them to make those decisions. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. A panicking Prime Minister is not worth the cost or the division after eight years. He'd recently announced that he would pause his carbon tax on heat for some people in some places where he's plummeting the polls and his caucus is revolting. He claims this is not regional, but his own rural affairs minister said that if people on the prairies want the same pause, they should elect more liberals. Can he confirm whether he endorses these comments or whether he condemns them? The right honourable prime minister. Perhaps the Conservatives think that phasing out coal was divisive because some parts of the country had already phased out coal and it only targeted the parts of the country that still rely on coal to generate electricity. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, we are united in our desire to fight climate change as Canadians. We are united in our desire to support Canadians who need it through uh, into a better future. That's why banning and phasing out home heating oil by replacing them with heat pumps right right across the country is an approach that will unite Canadians. The only division is amongst Conservatives who still think that climate change is fake. That's right. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Stating falsehoods about our position will not distract from the original question. Here is the question. The Minister of Rural Development said that if people want in, in the prairies wanted a pause on the carbon tax for home heat, they should elect more Liberals. Does the Prime Minister denounce these comments, or does he agree with them? Here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker. 
tens of thousands of people across the prairies are getting the chance to replace their home heating oil with carbon, uh, with, uh, with thermal pumps, with uh, uh, heat pumps, because we have uh, put forward programs to help in that transition as we pause the price on pollution for people in the prairies who rely on home heating oil, tens of thousands of them. We are there for people in the prairies who want to save thousands of dollars a year, who want to get heat pumps, who want to fight climate change. Why aren't the Conservatives there for those people? The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. We're there for all Canadians. <laughs> But this is really troubling. We thought that perhaps it was a gaffe when his Liberal Rural Affairs Minister said that the Prairies would have to elect more Liberals if they wanted a pause. And if this really is just a fair policy that applies evenly across the country, then why would you have to elect more of any particular party in your region to benefit from it? So I'll just give him one last chance. If he can't answer it, we'll assume that he agrees with her. Does he agree? with his rural affairs minister that if the prairies want to pause on the carbon tax pain, they have to elect more liberals. Here, yes here, or no? Here, here. The right honourable prime minister. No, Mr. Speaker, because people in the prairies who heat with home heating oil already are benefiting from a pause on the price of carbon uh, on the carbon price. That's because, Mr. Speaker, this pause that we put in applies right across the country. So the tens of thousands of Canadians in uh, in in uh, rural Canada, in the prairies, are going to be able to benefit from the transition to heat pumps. That is why, Mr. Speaker, we're going to continue to step up, including in doubling the rural uh, top up on uh, the carbon price rebate. We will continue to deliver for Canadians right across the country, and we will continue to be there for all Canadians, including women. And <laughs> the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister only divides to distract. That's all he ever does when he gets into trouble. He divides people along every possible battle line. He did that with the carbon tax carve out for only some in a region where his support is plummeting and his caucus is revolting. And for 10 days, he refused to condemn the comments of his own Liberal Minister who said this policy was applying based on how people voted. And now he signs on with the separatists to divide Canadians again. Will he instead of dividing Canadians reverse the policies that are driving them to the food bank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we see the Conservatives' approach uh, to partisan politics and to personal attacks. The reality is, when we stood with the 80 to 90 percent of Canadians uh, who chose to get vaccinated, they called us divisive. When we chose to stand uh, with uh, women across this country who want to control their own bodies, they called us divisive. When we stand with the two SLGBTQI plus kids who are being discriminated against, I thank the Honourable uh, uh, Whip for uh, Opposition Leader Whip for helping out to get some get some more, and I ask all members please to exercise a restraint so that we can hear the next question. The Honourable Member from Burnaby South. 
people are struggling to find a home they can afford. And this federal government has the power, the land, and the resources to end the housing crisis. On one side, we've got the corporate-controlled conservatives that want to sell off our public land to their rich investor friends that helps no one. But on the other side, we've got liberals who are openly admitting that their plan is to use public lands to build luxury homes. How can this prime minister justify using public lands to build homes that people can't afford? Here, here. The right honourable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, that's simply not true. We know Canadians are worried about paying their rent, finding an apartment, or buying a home. That's why uh, we're working on affordable housing and affordable uh, housing affordability right across the country. It's why we put forward the Affordable Housing and Groceries Act, which helps build more affordable apartments by cutting the GST on construction. Housing advocates and developers have described this move as a game changer that will get more affordable housing built. It's why it's essential that all members work with us to move these important measures forward. Forward. The Honourable Member from Edmonton Strathcona. Every single Canadian deserves to have health care when they need it. Mm -hmm. Public, universally accessible health care. But the Conservative leader, Danielle Smith, just got caught trying to make health care more chaotic and more bureaucratic. She is not hiring more health care workers, not treating health care workers with respect, and not and leaving the door wide open for more privatization. Sound familiar? This is right out of the Conservative playbook yes. and on the Liberals watch. Why are the Liberal government sitting on their hands while Alberta has their health care privatized? Here, 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 here. <laughs> Colleagues, soon the chair will uh, be issuing uh, some reflections upon the issue that was made up, uh, what was made uh, by several uh, House leaders from different parties uh, who had raised a question of uh, the relevance of questions in terms of to the administration of government or questions which would be directed to committee chairs. That will be coming shortly, but in the meantime, I'll ask all members to make sure that they do ask questions which are relevant. I'm going, I see that the Right Honourable Prime Minister is on his feet to reply, so I will allow the Right Honourable Prime Minister to respond to this question. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it is a relevant question because we have taken actions in the past uh, to draw back transfers and claw back transfers to provinces that haven't been obeying the Canada Health Act, and we will continue to do that. So let me be clear, we will always defend Canada's access to health care and won't hesitate to use all available tools under the Canada Health Act to protect this right. We expect all provinces and territories to adhere to the Act when they make decisions regarding Canadians' access to health care. The Minister of Health will be closely reviewing the details of the about Alberta Premier's plan, but we remain unequivocal when it comes to access to our health care system and access to pension supports, we will always stand with Canadians. The Honourable Member from Aurora Oak Ridge's Richmond Hill. Mr. Speaker, the planet is burning and 72% of Canadians are worried about climate change. Sadly, the Leader of the Opposition does not appear to be one of them. He stated that he will do nothing to reduce our emissions nor work with the global community within the Paris Accord to protect our future. In fact, just like Donald Trump, the Leader of the Opposition will take Canada out of the Paris Accord. The federal government is committed to net zero and has invested over $120 billion in a greener future. Will the government stand for future generations Unlike the reckless conservatives with their. Fortunately, the speaker was able to hear the question. The right honourable prime minister. 
Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the MP for Aura Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill, for her great questions on this important file. It is shameful that the Conservative leader has no plan to address a crisis facing all of humanity. His emphasis on technology to fight climate change means nothing because he is uh, somebody who has been opposing the development of offshore wind technology in Atlantic Canada. While our government has a serious plan that addresses affordability and the climate crisis, that leader has no plan and no vision. Perhaps he should put his glasses back on. Position. Mr. Speaker, with or without glasses, I don't. I will not lose 54 million dollars on an app that doesn't work. <laughs> This, this, is a, this is a Prime Minister who is now, whose government is now under RCMP investigation for giving out, again, for giving out contracts to firms that did absolutely no work. Now senior members of the bureaucracy are blowing the whistle and saying his top officials lied about it before committee. Will the Prime Minister cooperate, personally cooperate with the police in this latest criminal investigation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I can't help but wondering how many millions of dollars Canadians would have lost if they had followed the Leader of the Opposition's advice and bought Bitcoin so they could opt out of inflation. Uh, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to serious matters, both the RCMP and CBSA's Professional Integrity Division are investigating. The CBSA has also launched an internal audit to look into contracting at the agency and has increased oversight processes when it comes to the contracting. The honourable, the honourable leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, the former director of CBSA, our principal border authority, said that he felt incredibly threatened. Those were his words, by the former president of the organisation, and senior bureaucracy members of the prime minister's bureaucracy are to have lied, according to this testimony, in order to cover up this $54 million scandal. The matter is now under. Auditor General and RCMP investigation. Will the Prime Minister cooperate with the police, yes or no? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, obviously the reports coming out are extremely concerning, and I know that the, resp the uh, respective authorities will uh, be taking this extremely seriously. We expect our professional public servants to always conduct themselves with uh, utmost integrity, uh, and I'm sure uh, that that will uh, continue to happen. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, the entire government only takes direction from a guy who has two convictions for breaking the law, Mr. Speaker. And in this case, it's not just $54 million. There's $11 million given to a two-person two IT firm to do absolutely nothing. The same firm has gotten $60 million from this Liberal government since 2017 alone. The entire matter is under criminal investigation, so for a third time. Will the Prime Minister personally cooperate with the police, yes or no? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. You can understand that I won't take overly seriously the accusations from an individual who was uh, Minister of Elections when he bro and was found to break elections law. Uh, Mr. Speaker, when we uh, see matters of wrongdoing, we ensure uh, that proper authorities are looking into it, and of course our government will always uh, ensure full cooperation uh, with investigating authorities. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister is a man of conviction. He's got two of them, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> he actually.
nearly doubled the amount of money spent on outside consultants after promising to bring it down. When we pressured him on this, he said, I know what I'll do. I'll pay $670,000 to another consulting firm to find out how we can spend less money on consulting firms. Here's some free common sense advice, and will he take it? Why not just stop spending on juicy contracts for his friends? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, of course we need to ensure that we're getting the best value for funds spent in the public service. And the Minister agrees and is looking into it. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, let's talk about being a person of conviction. Uh, I am convinced uh, that we need to fight climate change. I am convinced that the only thing we can do to build a strong economy for the future is protect the environment and fight climate change while putting more money in people's pockets. These are my convictions, and I've continued to be consistent on them over the past uh, 15 years I've been in politics. We look forward to hearing what the Leader of the Opposition believes in, because right now it's it sure ain't clear. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. The Honourable Member for Avignon Lamétis, Matan Matapédia. Mr. Speaker, the Concern Copernicus Observatory tells us that 2023 will be the hottest year on record. At the same time, the Environment Commissioner says Canada is going to miss its greenhouse, gra greenhouse gas reduction target for 2030. So here we go again. This is the 10th federal climate plan since 1990, and it's headed for a 10th failure. All talk, no action. How many forest fires, heat waves, and hurricanes will it take before the government takes concrete action to reduce our emissions? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, for eight years, we've been doing more than any other government in history to reduce emissions. The fact is, as my colleague says, that we have to do even more. The big challenge is that instead of debating things here in the House, the best way to do more is outside of this place, but we have an opposition party that denies the reality of climate change and would prefer to do nothing, to have no plan, to not take this seriously. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, we're still stuck in this kind of debate over whether or not climate change is real. But on this side of the House, we know it's real and we will fight it. The Honourable Member for Avignon, La Métis, Matan Matapédia. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals want to fight global warming as long as it doesn't cost them any votes. And they keep giving subsidies to the oil patch and backing off on carbon pricing if that's what it takes to get votes. As a result, the federal government has never met its targets, and the current plan isn't going to change that. The Environment Commissioner has been crystal clear, saying it will soon be too late to avoid the catastrophic effects of climate change. It's time for bold action for the planet's future. What are they waiting for? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Liberal Party made the choice to form a government that combats climate change. We know Canadians are concerned about this and we, that we needed to take concrete steps to put a price on pollution, to invest in green technologies, to make the changes necessary and to help Canadians pay for the steps they need to take. Unfortunately, the bloc hasn't changed its stand. All they do is criticize, but the time has come for action. Quebecers and Canadians need to unite to combat climate change, and that's not what the bloc's doing. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The recording of a top Liberal government official reveals that the billion-dollar green fund the Prime Minister is running is not worth the cost or the corruption. Some extracts from that recording. It was free money sponsorship level kind of giveaway wow. and i quote since the prime minister learned of these allegations in march he hasn't fired a single solitary person wow. this is a billion dollar slush fund wow. is he worried about firing the insiders because he doesn't want them to blow the whistle on this broader liberal scandal right. the right honorable prime minister 
Speaker, earlier this year, I said was made aware of allegations of mismanagement at SDTC. The Auditor General has now decided to conduct an audit of SDTC, and our government has been working closely with them on this and welcomed the decision. In addition, SDTC has agreed to enable a thorough third-party review of the allegations regarding HR management, and we are committed to ensuring organizations with received federal funding adhere to the highest standards of governance. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. This is a billion-dollar taxpayer-funded slush fund that top officials now say amounts to a sponsorship scandal kind of corruption. It says they were giving away free money. This at a time when a record-smashing two million people are forced to food banks every month, when nine out of ten people can't afford homes. How could the Prime Minister have thought it appropriate to blow a billion dollars when Canadians cannot afford to eat, heat or house themselves? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, allow me to be perfectly clear. Any allegation of wrongdoing in any government department must be fully investigated. There are established processes for situations such as these, and this is precisely why the Auditor General has made the decision to conduct an audit. This is a serious situation, and we are taking it with the seriousness with it, which it uh, requires. Unfortunately, the Conservatives, as usual, are looking for a way to score cheap partisan points. We are going to continue. You, uh, to govern responsibly. The leader, the honourable leader of the opposition. There's nothing cheap about losing a billion dollars, Mr. Speaker. That's exactly why he's not worth the cost. He sees no problem throwing away 54 million on an arrive can app that didn't work and we didn't need and is now under criminal investigation. And now, six months after he learned of corruption, cronyism and mismanagement in this billion dollar fund, he has kept his hand-picked cronies in the position. Mr. Speaker, if he really thinks it's serious that this billion dollar fund had so much corruption, why won't he fire the people running it? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Canada is a country of rules and laws, and that's why we need to make sure uh, that we are doing proper investigations and ensuring appropriate consequences for any people involved in wrongdoing. This is how, uh, how a country of laws and rules functions. Unfortunately, Conservatives are still choosing to make cheap partisan points on very serious issues, and we are going to continue to take these issues seriously. Here, here. The Honourable Member from Charlottetown. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are rightly proud of those who've worn the uniform of the Canadian Forces and defended our rights and freedoms. However, the important contributions of Indigenous veterans haven't always been properly recognized. On the occasion of Indigenous Veterans Day, I'd like to ask the Prime Minister what the government is doing to ensure that the sacrifices of these brave men and women are appropriately recognized. The Right Honourable Prime Minister, I'd like to thank the member for Charlottetown for his question and for his commitment to veterans. Although previous governments were not there for Indigenous communities, Indigenous communities were there to defend our rights and freedoms. And that's why it's so important to recognize their huge sacrifice. And that's why we're taking steps like creating a team that's dedicated to Indigenous issues. We will be recognizing their sacrifice like we did in the Netherlands earlier this year, lest we forget. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The United Kingdom's Foreign Office has given adv travel advice to its, to its uh, citizens, which reads the following. The risk of terrorist attacks happening in Canada is very likely. End quote. Does the Prime Minister agree with the UK Foreign Office's assessment? And what is he doing to protect Canadians from such an attack? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> 
The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Canada has a robust and sophisticated uh, level uh, process around determining uh, levels of threats to Canadians. Uh, we elevated the level of threat uh, back in 2012 uh, to medium, and it stays there right now. Uh, we are continuing uh, to make sure we're doing everything we possibly can to keep Canadians safe. We understand these are trying times around the world right now, but the best thing we can do as Canadians is stay true to our values, uh, be respectful of one another, feel each other's pain and be there to support through very difficult times of a rise in hatred, including Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Terrorists are not interested in feeling other people's pain, they're interested in causing other people pain. And the UK Foreign Office has said, and I quote, the risk of terrorist attacks happening in Canada is very likely, end quote. Yet the Canadian government rates that risk at medium. Why the difference? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, obviously I can't speak how, uh, to how other countries uh, make their determinations on, uh, on travel advisories, but I can say that the work is done daily in Canada uh, to assess the threat level to Canadians and what can be communicated uh, to keep them safe. We uh, elevated the, uh, the threat level to medium in 2014, Mr. Speaker, and it has remained at that level since. But every single day, we reevaluate and ensure that we are doing everything we can, uh, privately and publicly, to keep Canadians safe. Thank you. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. And yet, if you simply read the UK Foreign Department's assessment of Canada, and I quote, the risk of terrorist attacks happening in Canada is very likely, end quote, then there is a very serious risk, Mr. Speaker. Why did Canadians have to learn from a foreign government about an increasing threat of terrorism in Canada? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, once again, I can't speak to how the UK makes its determinations, uh, but I certainly can say that in Canada we have top security agencies uh, and officials who work daily to reassess the threat levels to Canadians. Uh, they are working uh, every single day to keep Canadians safe and will continue to keep Canadians informed on the best ways to keep safe, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Davenport. Mr. Speaker, the residents of my riding of Davenport are proud of Canada's unwavering support for Ukraine and our proposed modernized Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement, also known as KUFTA. It's become increasingly uh, clear, though, that the Conservative caucus doesn't support KUFTA, criticizing it in committee, and the opposition leader had no shame in filibustering KUFTA in this House. While the Conservative leader would gladly let Ukraine down, can the Prime Minister tell this House why this trade legislation is so important? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the MP for Davenport for her advocacy on this file and her steadfast hard work. We have been solid in our support of Ukraine since day one, and we will be there to help them rebuild when they win. We've committed over $9.5 billion in financial, military and humanitarian aid, and the modernization of our trade deal with Ukraine is another important area of cooperation between our two countries and will be crucial to rebuild Ukraine. On this side of the House, Mr. Speaker, our support for Ukraine has been unwavering. Unfortunately, the leader of the Conservative Party cannot say the same. The Honourable Member from Timmins, James Bay. The planet is on fire. So what is the difference between the Conservative leader's approach and the Prime Minister's? Well, the Conservative leader is a climate denier and he would pull us out of the Paris Accord, whereas the Prime Minister is simply a denier of his global obligations, which is why we're not going to meet our 2030 targets. And the United Nations is pointing out that under this Prime Minister, Canada is pr planning a massive increase of oil and gas production. No wonder we are the worst country in the G7 for tackling emissions. So enough of the denial of facts, where is that emissions cap? 
The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I know the Honourable Member to be a staunch advocate for the environment and a strong defender of more action against climate change, which is why I know it must have been extraordinarily difficult for him the other day to vote with the Conservatives <laughs> against the most effective measure Canada has ever uh, used to fight against climate change. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we will continue to step up in the fight against climate change every single day while putting more money in the pockets of Canadians right across the country. The Honourable Member for Richmond, Arthabasca. Mr. Speaker, for weeks now, I've been asking questions about the Governor General's outrageous spending. Every time I get answers from ministers who feign offence and criticise reluctantly, but do nothing to change the ingrained culture of this institution. Meanwhile, GGs come and go, but the extravagant spending on meals, booze, luxury hotels, travel and dry cleaning marches merrily along. So I ask the Prime Minister today, does his government intend to cut her $33 million budget? Because clearly, she doesn't seem to be able to manage taxpayers' money carefully and responsibly. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Governor General, Mary Simon, is an upstanding, humane, caring person, and she plays an important role in our society and democracy. We will continue to see to it that her spending is managed appropriately. But the fact is, she has a very important role for the stability and future of our democracy. Unfortunately. And unfortunately, this concludes question period.